friends and vicarious travelers, this is Dancing Whimsy Styria, and I am here with another episode from my little kawaii bunker, um, just to kind of give an example of some more Japanese products that I've found on my grocery store hauls. Today we are going to be doing some food, so I have a cute little um, ice cream inspired little bow, some little ice cream cone earrings, and just a cute little pink heart with a little unicorn on it that kind of looks like it has little candy stars on the side to kind of go with the food theme for today. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing that I purchased is Kewpie mayonnaise. Now most people may not get very excited over mayonnaise, but in Japan their particular type of mayonnaise is something unlike what I've tasted before, and it's just very, very good. It's got a good creaminess, a little bit of sweetness to it, a little bit of tartness to it, but it's just a very good blend of flavors and one of the best mayonnaise I have ever eaten. The bottle always comes, um, I believe the bottles used to be shaped like the Cupid dolls, which are shown here, uh, but now they are just sold in regular shaped bottles. And this particular bottle, if you look, is really kind of squishy. So it has kind of an interesting squishy texture, almost like the Cupid dolls. Um, so that is the first thing, a big bottle of Cupid mayonnaise, because it's very exciting and very much a part of Japanese life to have mayonnaise on all sorts of things, from your fried noodles to octopus deep fried uh, snack food balls to fried chicken. People put mayonnaise on fried chicken. This is very commonly used here, so I couldn't start my video for food without some mayonnaise. All right. The next item for today is going to be just cute packaging with some little critters on it. So this is a pancake mix. And it just has this cute little animal. I think that's maybe a dog. And a little pug, and what's either a cat or a different kind of dog, all cooking and getting ready to eat. Just cute packaging, but on the inside, ah! on the inside, it's just a regular bag of pancake mix. So nothing exciting except for the bag for that one but the packaging for Japanese items can be very exciting sometimes, like for my other bag of pancakes with Pokemon on it. Ah, so it has a cute little Eevee and a cute little Pikachu and some little flowers. So just a cute little way to start your morning with some Pokemon. And inside, very similar to our last one, they have all the bags individually wrapped. So that's just another bag of pancake mix. Nothing too ex exciting about that, but it's delicious once it's cooked. I just realized the back of the Pikachu pancakes not only has the instructions on how to make it with pictures, so you can kind of figure it out how many eggs and how much milk or water you need to add. Um, it says to cook it until it starts bubbling and then flip it. But it also shows you a pattern you can cut out to make your pancakes look like Pikachu. You can cut little diagonals for its ears and put a little bit of chocolate sauce on the ears and make it look like Pikachu. How cute is that? Oh, and here's one where they made it look like a little Pikachu butt. How cute and darling is that? You can make a little Pikachu pancake. Cute! Now the next item, I will say that finding syrup here, especially maple syrup that is affordable, is sometimes very difficult. Um, so before I knew how to read um, kanji, katakana, or hiragana, and in my first weeks here when I was sort of struggling, I found the baking aisle. I found the bags of pancake mix. And there were jars next to it. 
so I just assumed all of them were syrup. So I got this one. It looks pretty syrupy. It looks like what a bottle of maple syrup would look like back home. Um, for those that can read kanji and katakana, they're probably laughing to yourself right now, but we will get into that. Um, but if you look at it, it's got a little bunny running. And it's holding a little cake, so I'm still on board thinking that this is still probably some sort of syrup or um, just something that you can drizzle on top of your pancakes. But one thing you will notice as you're looking at it is it is very watery. So I figured, okay, maybe it's a little watered down, but it'll still taste sweet. Um, but I thought it was going to be for baked goods no matter what. Um, so I really genuinely thought I was getting syrup and had no doubts about it. So I opened it up despite the fluidy con consistency, and I just like drenched it on my batch of pancakes. Um, come to find out, it had quite a strong smell, because for those of you who are already laughing, so this is ba, ra, n, d, brandy. I've smothered my pancakes in cooking brandy. Not even like alcoholic brandy, but cooking brandy. Um, instead of maple syrup. So those were a very moist <laughs> batch of pancakes um, with a slight extra surprise to them. Um, I ate as much as I could and then I ended up throwing the rest out because it was very strong. And brandy is not a flavor I like normally. So, if you come to Japan, watch out, because cooking brandy, brandy is kept right next to the maple syrup, and no, they are not the same thing, and they are not compatible. Um, so that's my funny little story in regards to cooking brandy and it not being maple syrup. Um, next item that I have, though, continuing on our journey, we're going to go back to those Pokemon pancakes and bring in some Pokemon seaweed shapes. So it's very common to have bentos like this one shown here. And a lot of times on the rice they will put different Pokemon characters. So this is different seaweed uh, shaped cutouts that you can put on your little bento. And here are some of the shapes included inside. Okay. Next we have the first really edible thing. Most of these things are just cooking ingredients, but this one is of course sticking with our Pokemon theme. A cute little Pokemon snack that looks to be chocolatey. It's got the sword and shield guys. It looks like it comes with a sticker or a card or something of some sorts. So I am excited for this. Let's give this a try. Okay, so now let's open the Pikachu snacks. Like I said, these look like they're going to be chocolatey. And it has a little prize. And so it looks like we open it right here, right at the little Pokeball tab, which is really cute. Love the detail on here. And start opening. It's up, and it looks like. The character we get on the inside is Mew. That's exciting. For those that don't know, Mew is one of my favorites. Okay, I'll just take this out and set it aside for a minute. And on the inside, it looks like there is some sort of little card. So let's pull that. Made in Japan. Set this aside for a minute. So we got the cute little Mew, and on the back, okay. on the back it looks like we have some little mazes to try and get to the different Pokeballs. And it looks like you want to try to get to this one. A little bees, but that's kind of a fun little add addition there. And let's see, we got Pikachu and Mew. 
So it looks like they are pretty decently sized, and it looks like it's supposed to look like either an Eevee or a Pikachu head. It's a little, probably closer to Pikachu, I think. Okay, let's give the little Pokemon snack a try. Itadakimasu! It really dissolves in your mouth quite quickly and it's a nice puffiness kind of reminds me of like a really big cocoa puff if you've ever had that type of cereal it reminds me a lot of those actually um so you know kind of like a big cereal rice crackery puffy taste not bad by any means not knocking me on the floor but it has a good chocolatey taste so i'll go ahead and give it like a seven or eight out of ten pretty good snack if you had it, you would not be disappointed, so long as you like chocolate. So yeah, nice snack. Alright, and now for this guy. Alright, and it looks like this is Charizard. So it looks like it's some sort of like sticker or decal. Pretty cool. Alright, so the last two items I have are uh, back to like cooking items. So not anything that I'll be eating on camera. That was the only little snack I had for on camera. Uh, so the next item I have is a really, really cute box of curry. Or at least the curry powder. Uh, so this is a box with characters from a series called Pretty Cure or Pre-Cure. Um, basically a Magical Girl series. So this is also similar to uh, Glitter Force. If you ever watched Glitter Force on Netflix or Amazon or whatever platform it was on, it's based off of these Pretty Cure characters. That was one season for Glitter Force. So yeah, cute little box of curry that I look forward to making later. I'm not going to taste it raw though because curry powder is usually quite potent and quite strong on its own. So this is the last item that I have for today. And it's a little bit of a mystery, but I think I know what it is. Um, I got this in Okinawa when I was visiting uh, some friends down there. And this one, I believe, is going to be salt um, from the region, but I'm not sure. So let's go ahead and open it and take a look. Right, so here is our little mystery box. So I will slide this little string off. Maybe it's tied very tight. Much tighter than I expected. There we go. Okay, and when we open it, ta da! It looks like this is all basically just different kinds of salts from around the region with different flavors. And actually, it has most of it in English. This one is hot pepper salt. This is hibiscus salt. Dragon fruit salt. Turmeric salt. Papaya and pineapple salt. It's probably going to have a little bit of sweetness to it. Purple yam salt. Purple yams are very common in the Okinawa area. Uh... Hirami lemon salt, so that'll be kind of a citrus. Bitter melon salt. Mozuku seaweed salt. I think this is the specialty seaweed that's said to be a little bit sweeter. That is only grown in Okinawa. And long pepper salt. So some fun flavored salts to use when I am cooking and baking to kind of change some of the flavors. So I thought this was fun. It was a very local specialized item and it's all fresh sea salt from the area. 
I also love that this is pretty much just like a rainbow of flavors on here. So I love the marketing, um, the fact that it's a local product and something that I can keep using over and over again and be very useful in the kitchen. But that was my last item for today. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and wherever you are out there, I hope you are staying safe and healthy and just keep hanging in there and hopefully we will have more travel adventures later.